Hello guys, I'm Yadagir Reddy and welcome to the series of Java for Obsolete Beginners. In this video, we will see how we can take the input from the user in Java. So generally, in our Java programming, we define and declare the variables before the execution itself. That means, before executing any program, we create the variables and we assign the data to those variables, right? So for example, like this. So here, I want to print the i value. So here, I have created one variable, i and I have assigned 10 value to this variable before execution itself. Then when I execute this, I can get this value as an output, right? But here I don't want to pass like this. So this is my hard coded value, right? So here I have provided the value before execution. So during the execution, I cannot modify this, right? Only after the execution, again, I can modify the values, then I can execute, right? So that means every time if I want to change the data, every time I have to modify the program. So instead of that, what we can do, we can pass the values during the execution. Okay. So if you are able to pass the values during the execution, then we can pass the dynamic values, right? So here it is a static value. So it's a fixed value, right? But if you want to pass the dynamic values, you can pass it from the execution. Okay. So now in this video, we will see how we can pass the values during the execution also. Okay. Further, Java is providing us one class file that is scanner. So using the scanner class, we can actually provide the values during the execution also. So first let me comment this. So here, first I need to create the scanner class object, right? So I will say scanner. So when I press control space, here you can see, it is suggesting so many scanner classes here, right? So which one I should pick? So here I have to pick the scanner class which is coming from java.util package, okay? So that is this first one. So I'm picking this. And I will name the object as sc new scanner. Okay. So here I need to pass the input stream. In Java, we use the streams for reading the data and writing the data. Okay. So we have output stream and we have input stream. The output stream is used to write the data and the input stream is used to read the data. So generally, if you see here, system.out.println. So here this line will write the data into the console, right? So that means here this out is nothing but output stream. Okay. So because of this is a output stream, we are able to write the data into console. So in a similar way, if you want to read the data from the console, we need to use the input stream. So the input stream name is in system dot in. Okay. So here also we have the out stream in system class, right? So the similar way in stream also is available inside system class only. So now the scanner object is created, right? So this is the object. So in the scanner class, we have some methods. Okay. Using those methods, we can actually provide the values during the execution. So first, if you want to read the data from the user, first you need to ask the data from the user, right? For example, if I want to know your name, I will ask your name first, right? As a user, first I will ask what is your name? Then you will provide your name. Then I can say hello, right? So the same way I'm going to apply here. Okay. So here first I need to ask the user, what is your name? So if you want to write anything into the console, we need to use system.out.println, right? So I will say, what is your name? So once the user reads this one, he will enter his name. So we need to capture that name, right? So here name is nothing but a text. So for storing the text, we need to use a string, right? So I will say string variable name is name. Here I need to use this scanner object, okay? Because I want to read the data from the console. So sc dot so here we have so many methods actually when you type next you will see so many methods next double next float next in next long so that means for every data type we have a method so in java we have so many data types right in our earlier video we have already discussed about that so here for each and every data type there is a special method so here i want to read the string so here we don't have next string method so we need to use next line method here Okay, so this next line method will read the string data from the user. So now this data, I mean, whatever the user has entered, that name is coming into this name variable. Okay, now I want to just say hello to this user. So I will use hello, then name. It's a very simple program. I'm just reading the data from the user and I'm saying hello to the user. Okay, I'm displaying whatever the data that user has entered again to the user only. So after completing this one, we need to close the scanner object. Okay. So in Java, if you are dealing with streams like input stream or output stream, you need to close the stream. Okay. So sc dot close. So now let me just execute this. So in the right side console, we should get the output. Okay. 
So now it is asking what is your name. I will say HYR. So when I press enter, it is saying hello HYR, right? So in the program, I did not store this HYR actually, right? So anywhere statically, I did not store this. I have provided this HYR value dynamically during the execution, right? So for example, if I run this program again, so this time it is asking what is your name? I will say John. Hello John. We can execute the same program with different different sets of data also because we are able to provide the values during the execution, not before the execution, right? So that is the advantage of the scanner class, okay? So here we have seen how to read the string values, right? So we will see one more data type also, okay? So for example, after reading the name, I want to ask his age. So I need to prompt the user. What is your age? Okay, then I need to read that value, right? So here I no need to create the scanner object again. So once you define the scanner object, you can use that scanner object to read any kind of data type, okay? Any kind of values. So here age is a number, right? So you can use byte, short, long or integer or anything, okay? Any data type which deals with number, you can use that. So here generally I will use int. So I will name the variable as age and I want to read the value, right? So sc dot, we have a method called next int. So here my data type is int, right? So I need to use next int. So this will read the age into this age variable, okay? So now I want to print the age. I'll simply say your age is and I am displaying the age to the user itself. Okay. So let me run this program. So it is asking what is your name? I will say HYR. Hello HYR, what is your age? So here I will say 26. Your age is 26. So here in this program, I did not use the age also statically. Okay. So this age also I can pass it dynamically during the execution. So next time if I run this program, I can give name as different and age also different. Okay. So that is one advantage of scanner class. You can pass the values during the execution phase, okay? Not before the execution. So this is how we use the scanner class. So if you want to read any different type of data, you can use the respective method. Just like if you want to read the double, you can use next double. So if you want to read the float value, you can use next float. So like this, you can use the respective method. So that is for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any doubts or if you have any comments, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.